Who is that red-faced man that you see every Chinese household holds a shrine of? He is the god known as Guan Gong, more commonly referred to as Guan Yu in the history text. Why is this red-faced man referred to as a god anyways? What exactly did this man do? Does he have some sort of supernatural powers for people to refer to him as a god? Well look no further, I will gladly tell you guys exactly why this red-faced man is such a popular god amongst Chinese folks. Guan Yu isn't any old mythical god. In fact, he was very much real. He was a general who served under a warlord named Liu Bei. During the latter years of the Han Dynasty, the kingdom was split up into three kingdoms. Wei, Shu, and Wu, also regarded as the Romance of the Three Kingdoms. Guan Yu belonged to the Shu Kingdom, which was one of the considerably weaker kingdoms. Guan Yu, with his master Liu Bei and his fellow general Zhang Fei, swore an oath of brotherhood and vowing to protect the Han Dynasty and remain loyal to the cause. Guan Yu became renowned for his loyalty to Liu Bei, despite losing many battles to Cao Cao, who was the leader of the Wei Kingdom. One battle, Liu Bei's forces were defeated by Cao Cao, and Guan Yu was captured. Cao Cao showered Guan Yu with gifts and promises of wealth, hoping he would accept and convert over to his side. Guan Yu declined the gifts and told Cao Cao that I've sworn to follow Liu Bei until the day I die. I cannot break that oath. Cao Cao admired potential and loyalty. He did not want to needlessly kill Guan Yu for being loyal to his master, for that was what he admired most about him. Cao Cao believed he could sooner or later persuade Guan Yu to join his side if Liu Bei was killed in the future. Cao Cao decided to let Guan Yu go in good faith that should Liu Bei die in the future, he would have him join his side later. However, this did not ever happen since Liu Bei was not killed, instead he lived to become the Emperor of Shu. Guan Yu served Liu Bei until the end of his life in the year 219. Guan Yu was killed by Sun Quan, the third warlord. After he had lost Jin province, Guan Yu was ambushed and captured along with his son while attempting to retreat. The two were executed, with Guan Yu's head being sent to Cao Cao, who arranged a funeral with full rights for the general that he admired and wanted for all of these years. Nowadays, Guan Yu is worshipped for many reasons and by many different strands of Chinese society. As a mighty warrior, he is a slayer of evil, protecting those he watches over from ill fortune. As the embodiment of honesty and integrity, he is often displayed by businesses as a sign of trustworthiness and a defender of their good name. While as an upholder of code of brotherhood and a symbol of fraternal loyalty, he is worshipped by everyone from Chinese immigrants to foreign lands, to the Hong Kong police force and even underground triad organizations. After his death, he was given the name Guan Gong, meaning Lord Guan, and is often depicted with his brother Zhang Fei, particularly on the doors of homes or temples. When seen with Liu Bei, Liu Bei will be the one seated with Guan Gong and Zhang Fei standing guard by his side. Though indeed a mighty warrior, he is more often worshipped as a man of peace and a guarantor of harmony than a simple god of war. He only became a soldier to try and prevent the country falling into chaos and to restore the land to peace. As such, it is his principles and the standards he stood for, rather than his wartime exploits, for which Guan Gong is remembered. In turn, it is his qualities as a man, rather than a warrior, for which Guan Gong is worshipped. As always, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, maybe leave a like. If not, leave a comment down below and let me know how I can improve. If you want to see more videos of mine, please subscribe. I'll see you guys next time. Johnny Y, signing out.